So last week uh, we looked at the Varnashram system, the um, um, Varnas being Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, uh, the social system. And then Ashram is the spiritual system, starting with Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, and then we have Sanyas. Today, I wanted to talk about samskars. You may have heard that word before, samskars. This boy has a good samskar. This girl has good samskars. What does that mean? So let's have a look at what samskars is. These are like the rites of passage. In, what, that, what does that mean? It's a journey. Our, our life in this body is a journey. And these samskars are to assist that journey. They're not just formalities or social observances, but they actually, the samskars are supposed to purify, purify us. Um, supposed to purify us. So at critical junctions in life's journey, what does this word actually mean? It, uh, samskars means uh, mental impressions. Um, which we may have accumulated in previous lives, in this life. So what does that mean? Some scars are the subtle impressions of our past actions, right? Sometimes we do things naturally, you know, it just comes so naturally. And generally that's because we've got some scars from previous lives and where we've uh, performed some acts which created such an impression on our mind that it stayed with us uh, even in this life. Actions that we perform with full awareness are the ones that make the greatest impression on our mind. Sometimes we do things uh, casually, you know, without too much thought. Um, they, they may not have such an impression on our mind, but when we do something with full focus, um, that will have an impact on the mind. When we perform such an action, a subtle impression is deposited in our mind's field. So um, the more we do something, especially we do it with great attention, it creates a deep impression in our minds. And those deep impressions are some scars. And they can stay with us throughout this life. And they may even be carried forward into the next life. Each time the action is repeated, the impression becomes stronger. This is how a habit is formed. Right? It's very difficult to break a habit, right? generally because we've developed that habit uh, by doing something over and over again. The stronger the habit, the less mastery we have over our mind when we try to execute an action that is contrary to our habit patterns. That's why it's so hard to break habits, especially bad habits. It's easy to get into bad habits, but to get out of them, very tough. And that's because the more we do something, the impressions in our mind get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And when we try to do something contrary to that, um, it's very hard. And that's why it's recommended that we take to spiritual life from a very young age, even from within the womb, usually what happens, oh yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute actually. <laughs> the samskars ceremonies, so there's, there's a series of samskars that uh, we in Sanatan Dharma follow. They help create a favorable mentality for stepping positively from one phase of life into the next. So we'll see what are these samskars which are recommended within Vedic culture. The samskars are considered essential for the twice-born Varnas. So that's the um, Brahman, Shruta, Vaish, and um, Kshatriyas. And neglect of any uh, ritual might render a member fallen from this status. Of course, this is perhaps a little bit 
are a date, but um, it's important to understand that these some scars will have an impact on us, our behavior. And behavior is what counts towards where are we in, in the social system. It's not birth. Birth is not a big factor in where we are in, our, in the social system i.e. whether we're Brahman, Vaish, Shudra, uh, Kshatriya, Shudra, Vaish, or whatever. Although some traditions mention 10 rites of passage, or up to 16, or occasionally even more, um, only five are currently popular. Uh, we, we'll go through these five. There's the Garbhadhan Samskar, which is the preconception procedures. Then there's the Jatta Karma, which is the after birth, the different ceremonies that take place going into childhood. I know many, many, many families who follow these samskars. Um, Upanayan, and that is uh, the sacred thread ceremony. Viva samskar, everybody will be familiar with that, marriage. Antim. Antyeshti uh, samskar, funeral or rites for the dead. So those are the five. Let's let's have a look at those in a little bit of detail. Garbhadhan samskar, preconception procedures. So significantly, the first samskar is called purification of the womb. Begins prior to conception, even before, well before. Um, the male and female get together and conceive. It aims at sanctifying the consciousness of both husband and wife before they try to beget a child. See, this is not even taught in our culture. It's lost, it's forgotten. Um, <laughs> but this is so important, the consciousness of the mother and the father before they conceive. Scripture explains that the type of soul that enters the womb is largely determined by the mental states of both husband and wife, a notion graphically illustrated in the Mahabharata by the example of the Tarasta Pandu and Vidur. So you may have already come across this pastime in the Mahabharata where Ved Vyas was asked by his mother, Satyavati, to uh, beget children because um, her other children died. So, Vedvyas uh, was requested to impregnate the two queens of um, uh, whose queen? Which is the Vedya. The first queen, when she saw um, Vedvyas, she was frightened and she just closed her eyes because he looked, you know, he, he's a sage. He's been in the forest for years and years. He hadn't shaved. He um, looked unruly, he had terrible clothes, he probably didn't smell too good. <laughs> so she closed her eyes. The birth of the child um, gave rise to Dhatarasa, who was blind. Second, Queen, she was absolutely petrified when she saw Ved Vyas. Pandu was born, who was pale. So Satyavati asked the queen, please have another go. <laughs> because both these children may not you know, be able to be you know, long-term rulers. But the queens couldn't bear the thought. They sent a maid. The maid understood the position of Vedvya, she gave him full respect and was born Vidur. And Vidur was the, my, one of the wisest personalities on this, on, at that time on the planet. So the mental state of both mother and father is important. The soul takes shelter within the semen of a father who is injected, which is injected within the womb of a mother. And with the help of the mother's uh, emulsified ovum, the soul grows a particular type of body. 
So another example. This is in the Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mind of Kashyap Muni was not in order when he conceived the two sons, Hirani Kashipu and Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha, Hirani Kashipu. Therefore, the semen he discharged was simultaneously extremely powerful and also mixed with the quality of anchor. While conceiving a child, one's mind must be very sober and devotional. I remember when um, we requested our Guru Maharaj that we wanted to have a child. And he said, okay, um, you should go and visit the holy places and chant many, many rounds of Mahamantra. And in the proper consciousness, you can conceive. And that's what we try to do. Uh, we did, in fact. Also, whilst the child is in the womb, he can actually hear and understand. So our Guru Maharaj recommended you should read the Ramayan. You should watch the Ramayan. And in that way, um, the child will get the benefit. You get the benefit, of course. The so will the child. And again, in the scriptures, this is backed up. Because when Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb of his mother, in back in Tvetayuk, Narad Muni, he preached to the mother. But who was actually listening was the son in the womb, Prahlad. And he came out, born devotee. One of the greatest devotees of the Lord. And there's many, many other examples uh, of this. So for some of us, that might be a bit too late, <laughs> but it's good to know this and we can share this with relevant people. And of course, many of you are young. So please bear this in mind. This is very important, extremely important. Second samskar, jata karma. So when the birth takes place and then after, uh, you know, going on from birth into childhood, the following ceremonies welcome the baby into the world. The father places a small amount of ghee and honey on the baby's tongue and whispers the name of God in the ear as soon as the child is born. On the 11th day after birth, the parents celebrate the name giving ceremony, Nam Karana Karana. By dressing the baby in new clothes, the family astrologer, may not happen so much nowadays, announces the child's horoscope. Traditionally, the child's name is chosen according to the, the Rashi and the position of the moon in the birth. Songs and sometimes a haven, fire sacrifice, accompany the rituals, rites, followed by the feeding of the devotees, very important. So this is, uh, um, I, I don't see this uh, absorbed, absorbed so much um, as it used to be, but uh, this one is quite uh, popular uh, or important as well. The first outing, normally at five weeks, around five weeks. Is that right, five weeks? Yeah. The mm -hmm. child takes version of the sun, then the temple deity, and in the evening sees the moon. So generally the uh, mother and the child, they stay home um, because it's said this period is a challenging period for both the child and the mother. It's important they recover very quickly from the experience of childbirth, which is extremely traumatic. Um, so this is an uh, important time for them to recuperate. And then the fifth week comes and the first outing is to the temple, very important. And this is co very commonly observed in our community. And so is this next ceremony, which is uh, the first grains. When the child is te teething, when the teething begins, usually at six months, the first grains are given. And we do this a lot, a uh, lot of ceremonies like this. Um, a very popular ceremony. It's when up to now the child has had uh, 
you know, like milk or some fruits, you know, like mashed up, no grains because the stomach is not ready. And what we do at this ceremony, we do a fire sacrifice, we do a yakya, we invite the Lord in the form of uh, fire to come into the yagya, but also invite that same yagya fire to um, reside in the stomach of the child to help digest the food that we eat. So um, this is uh, undone ceremony, it's called. Okay, yeah, good, good. And it usually happens um, at the six month stage, usually. Sometimes it can be earlier if the child is really growing fast and you know, ready to play football, <laughs> very young age. Uh, then you, there may be situations when it uh, can be done a little earlier. The first haircut, Mundan ceremony. Again, this is quite popular. We have a, quite a tough time finding a proper barber and we don't take on that risk ourselves of shaving the child. Um, <laughs> usually the, the parents go to India and uh, get it done there. <laughs> but we've done a few uh, in the UK. Again, it's very popular and uh, very important, samskara. Okay, just carrying on the third set of samskars. Open uh, with the children one. There's others as well. When they origin, when they go to the school, right? Uh, the first day of school. There's others as well, but we're just focusing on uh, ones which are uh, important. The school one is quite important actually. So I should have brought that in. Upanaya's uh, initiation. This is a sacred third ceremony. This ceremony marks a boy's official acceptance into the Varna. At this point, he becomes twice born. So the first birth is from the parents, mother and father. Second birth is from the guru, the spiritual master. Everyone has a first biological birth, but when a young man seeks his spiritual identity, he symbolically Accepts. It's not symbolic, actually. It's uh, 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 reality. It's a, uh, it's a very important step to accept a spiritual leader as father and the Vedas as mother. He also may receive a new spiritual name at this time. So generally, this ceremony can take place between this age of uh, 8 and 12. Um, and we've seen children like... Uh, here yeah, they are. Oh, where did it go? There they are. We showed this picture last uh, week. This is Puna Mataji's two wonderful children um, who went to India just for this ceremony, just very recently. And they partook in this ceremony and uh, got all the blessings. But generally speaking, at this time, you would accept spiritual um, gyan from a guru. And if you're too young, you may just pass over your head. Uh, so then it just becomes a symbolic, symbolic thing. But actually, this is a very, very important step. At the ceremony, he receives a janoi and a sacred thread, usually worn for the entire life. It is replaced at intervals, but never removed until the new one has been put on. You may have seen that. There is a separate samskar marking the beginning of education. Oh, there you go, education. But nowadays, the two ceremonies are often combined. Upanaya means sitting close by, referring to the boys taking shelter of the guru, the spiritual teacher. Traditionally, of course, in the old days, uh, he would move away from home to the teacher's ashram called Gurukul. So Ramachandra. Ram, Bharat, Chaturgna, and uh, Lakshman, they did this. They left home. They moved to the teacher's ashram, to the Gurukul. So even God um, accepts this tradition. Very important. Uh, of course, now it's, it's pretty much lost. <clears throat> the emphasis at Gurukul was on the study of the Vedas and the development of character. Every member of the royal family, 
even sorry, members of the royal family were trained to live simply without luxury or sense gratification in order to keep their minds pure and unspoiled. When later married, they would remain attached to the spiritual values they imbibed during these school, during their school days. The ceremony itself involves shaving the head, bathing, wearing new clothes. There you go. <laughs> you see they shave their heads. <clears throat> And this is good. There was no thought, oh, you know, what will happen when I go to school? Will they take the mickey out of me? Actually, these are very important things to do. The boy, he may bring a beg arms from his mother and from other relatives. There's a haven, uh, usually a fire sacrifice. Uh, and the, then they're given the uh, sacred thread. The boy will then hear the Gayatri mantra from the priest or the guru. Who may give him a spiritual name to signify his second birth. Thereafter, he will chant this prayer thrice daily at dawn, noon, and dusk. There's very specific rules for chanting Gayatri Mantra. And perhaps we can do one session on the different types of mantras. Um, because there's a lot of misunderstanding about the Gayatri Mantra. It should be chanted silently. There's no harm in ch chanting it loudly or any time, but there's no benefit either. <laughs> it's just words. So we have to be, and this is not what I'm saying, this is what's been subscribed in the Vedas, how Gayatri Mantra is to be chanted. But nowadays it's become a bit of a fashion and uh, <clears throat> the sort of benefits not necessarily there. The, the boy takes vows to study the Vedas and serve his teachers and follow certain vows, including celibacy. And the ceremony is concluded by offering dakshina to the teacher. Then we have the fourth, which is Viva Samskar, which I think a, a lot of people will have gone through. And perhaps it's the most important Samskar. A couple would stay together for life or until the husband took to the renounced order. Divorce was not allowed. It's a word that doesn't appear actually in the Vedic scriptures. And those who left their partners were often ostracized from society. Matches were usually arranged by the elders and based on astrological principles. So our marriage, for example, we were introduced by mother and father and um, they looked at the horoscope and uh, we liked each other and uh, it went ahead and uh, somehow we still together after so many years. Despite modern attitudes towards this practice, it seems that these marriages work, work relatively well. They're not always successful, but I'd say they're probably more successful than the love marriages. Marriage was usually between members of the same Verna just so that there's compatibility and the same jati, occupational subgroup. Scriptures approved of a woman accepting a partner from a higher runner, but the opposite was not allowed, not acceptable in, this, in the scriptures, and it's not accepted in the scriptures. Until more recent times, women were often married very early to protect their chastity, and because women were considered to mature much more quicker than young men. But of course, this has been exploited to the extent that the girls are neglected, they are not educated, and after marriage, perhaps they may not have much of a life. And that is really exploitation. Uh, and uh, it's really not good for the women, of course, but not good for society as well. The, gi the giving of a dowry as a symbol of father's affection towards his daughter is an ancient practice, it's apparently going back to at least the time of Lord Krishna. At that time, the wealth remained the bride's personal property because of more recent widespread uh, abuse. The Indian government has declared the dowry system illegal in 1961. This has really been very badly abused, but any dowry that's given 
actually belongs to the bride. It's for her protection. The ancient elaborate, uh, elaborate and often uh, elaborate and often lengthy ceremony is uh, usually performed by Brahmin priests. There is much regional and denominational variation, but certain features are common. Welcoming the bridegroom, exchanging the flower garlands, the daughter given in, hand, given in marriage, this uh, sacred fire sacrifice, the holding of the hands, circumambulation of the fire sacrifice, marking the bride's hair parting with kumkum, a uh, groom putting a Mangal Sutra on the bride, taking the seven steps towards uh, the, the Lord, tying the knot, garment of uh, bride and groom, and receiving the elders' blessings. So all these things were an exchanging of presents. So this is common in uh, most marriages. And then we come to the last samskar, uh, Antim samskar. Um, and this is, of course, at the time of death of the body. The soul never dies. After marriage, most couples spend the rest of their lives as householders. After children have left home, there's generally a period of gradual retirement from active life. We saw that last uh, Sunday, going from Grihastha to Vanaprastha, and an increased dedication to spiritual practice. This corresponds to the third stage of life, Vanaprastha, which these days is rarely adopted formally and certainly followed less rigorously. A few men still take sannyas and leave home, prepare for the inevitable death. In one sense, the whole of life with its various stages and some scars is a preparation for death and beyond. The funeral rites are almost universally performed and follow similar patterns. So most are cremated. We don't bury unless um, there are exceptions, small children and uh, sadhus, saints, whose bodies are considered pure and therefore they're buried. And the rationale is that burning enables the departed soul to abandon attachment for his body, previous body, and move swiftly forward to the next chapter of life. Often the soul will leave the body, but will be hovering around because of great attachment, not just to the body, but to the grieving relatives. And that's why it's often said, don't cry when somebody's died. Don't cry because you're going to uh, hold, that hold that soul, that's it. Yeah, yeah, holding back from moving on. So this is one of the things this burning of the body does. And it's done fast in India, especially. Funeral ceremony should be should therefore be performed as soon as possible. So if they pass away in the morning, by evening, it's, uh, the, the cremation is done, finished. Um, or by dawn, if they leave after a certain period of time in the day whichever comes, occurs first. Therefore, in Bharat, the funeral takes place within hours of death. Uh, regulations elsewhere means it may take a little longer, especially in the UK. The ceremony itself, the body is washed by relatives, dressed in fresh clothes, debacked with flowers. A drop of Ganga water is placed in the mouth. Tutsi leaves are also placed on the lips in the mouth. The corpse is then carried on a stretcher or, or, or a coffin, of course, to the cremation grounds, accompanied by bhajans. And usually Ram bhajans is the one we sing. The eldest son writes, lights the funeral pyre. If the son is not there, the daughter can do. Or the grandchild. Or the grandchild. Or the best is the priest, the Brahmin priest. That's even better than anybody else. As part of the ceremony, a priest or a relatives recite appropriate verses from scripture, usually from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, this from verse 13 to verse 30 are recited about the eternity of the soul. Usually three days later, the eldest son will collect the ashes and place them in the Ganga or another sacred river. In the UK, relatives may travel to Bharat for this purpose, though some are now using the good old thems. There's a period of, also a period of mourning, extending to about 13 days after the funeral, varying according to uh, social situations. 
and other considerations. <clears throat> and during this time, consider, the family is considered impure. They will not attend religious functions, um, not eat any uh, certain types of foods, sex sweets. And the reason they don't attend religious functions is because they're in a emotionally uh, challenged situation. So better not to, uh, better to grieve at home. It is a period for giving rent to one's thing, grief so that one can live unhindered by unreleased emotions, very important. Significantly though, these rights are more for the benefit of the deceased than for the bereaved. They're essential to ensure that the smooth passage of the soul to a better level of existence, the family, leaves food and water for the soul during these 13 days as the soul needs these before reaching its next destination. So this <coughs> um, is part of the Shrad ceremony, is it Shrad? Uh, or Pindan, Pindan ceremony. Pindan ceremony. So uh, ba basically, um, why 13 days? It's, it's said that it's 12, uh, 12 days so one day is equal to one year so it takes uh, a whole year for the soul to reach its destination and go through all the different uh, gates before uh, getting to Yamraj and then on the 13th day it get, gets to Yamraj and that's when you have a, the, a, a feast in the honor of that soul so that's why we have 12 days to 12, 12 days signifies a whole year which is a 12 months and and it's said that during that uh, period when the soul is moving to, to gates of Yamraj, um, the Yamduts and the soul uh, require food and water for the journey. So that, that is why we do that. And sometimes we even give it to the, the cows because the, uh, the cows and also crows, because crows are supposed to take uh, the, that food to the Yamduts as well. So, Interesting. And actually, if there is appetite, we can uh, talk about the journey of the soul once it leaves the body. It's quite a, it's quite a journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've done a few seminars on, on that, uh, but it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> Most essential is a Sraj ceremony performed on the first day of, first anniversary of the death. Prashad often balls of cooked rice are offered to the Lord and in turn to the departed soul. So that uh, stop that we can stop there. And now today, Ishwari and Kishori are unable to, they, they've joined us very kindly, but their usual 13 or 14 questions won't be there because they're not able to. Uh, speak today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if anybody, it's a good opportunity for others uh, to ask any questions that you may have or, or share anything you'd like to share. Uh, let's start with Ashwin Bhai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Krishna. Yes, Krishna, Ashwin Bhai. <laughs> very, very interesting and uh, uh, important subject is what um, I have just a few comments really um, the um, first one around the birth um, we have generally accepted the ceremony on the sixth day Chatina mm -hmm. that's correct yeah and uh, 11th is probably kind of a stretch i don't know mm. in our family we do it on the sixth day yeah we too uh, yeah, most too, families do yeah. nowadays Ag yeah. agreed agreed yeah. uh, yeah. that also culminates in a name naming ceremony mm. correct correct mm. correct <clears throat> now just death and birth uh, even even after the birth of this child <clears throat> it is advice recommended that you don't go to the temple just like after the death mm. uh, you don't go to the temple five weeks i think is it for the birth after birth five mm. weeks six weeks is it six weeks okay yeah. 
અને અને એને પિંગરું કે ઓકે અને દેશ ને શું કે એમાં શોખ રાખે એટલે એમાં ના જાય ના આઈ હેવ નેવર અન્ડરસ્ટુડ હાઉ ટુ એક્સપ્લેન ધીસ એઝ ટુ ધ રાશનલ ફ્રોમ સ્ક્રિપ્ચર્સ પોઈન્ટ ઓફ વ્યૂ એઝ ટુ વાય ધીસ પ્રેક્ટિસિસ ઇઝ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ બીકોઝ ઇટ કેન બી ટેકન ટુ અ લેવલ વિચ બીકમ્સ અનકમ્ફર્ટેબલ the only only rationale i found was ke in olden days uh, pingru or the birth we don't take the child or, or family goes to the temple is because uh, the child is is kind of vulnerable and so yeah. if family mm-hmm. were to go to the temple they may pick up some germs yeah yeah and bring them at home sounds good Mm-hmm. and same with the um, the lady as well because mm-hmm. it's the probably the most traumatic experience in yeah. the, you know yeah so. so she has to regain her strength as well so that's why no no she has all, all all these um things like you know different uh, foods foods and you know things to get a nourishment back as well mm-hmm. get the well, body back i'm i'm not i'm not talking about the mother going to the temple after birth i'm talking about the family members okay oh you mean the family members that's unusual yeah i haven't heard that before mm. oh yeah. yeah yeah that is very common in gujarat they oh. don't go to the temple for six weeks at a pingru ke oh okay okay that uh, we have i have never come across that yeah and the only rationale i i found sensibly acceptable was ke maybe they go to the community and bring some germs back to your okay. child oh maybe yes yeah makes sense makes mm. sense yeah and, and likewise when somebody passes away the reason why we don't mix in the community go to the mandir is because in olden days the normally the death was due to some sort of a disease right right and we don't carry that in the community okay mm. yeah it makes sense makes sense okay so that's that one um in terms of the barber and and making mundan yeah yes boys have to do it that is quite normal mm. in the town that we lived in when my children were growing up there were no barbers <laughs> and, uh, and uh, to get get uh, an english guy to come and cut a hair of a uh, yeah yeah mm. one year old child he would be reluctant to do that so <laughs> i became the barber person <laughs> <laughs> That's the I best have thing. Done, I have done uh, my first son and a few other children my nephew and uh, so we now we know where to come <laughs> and it was an interesting exercise <laughs> yeah i was asked a few times to do it and i i have not taken that risk i have to say now it's easier with the machine that are available right right <laughs> the question there was why only the boys have to do it and not girls mm i i'm not sure of the answer of well that um go on do you know no, no. um we got a, we've got a uh, a massive book with jainty studying <laughs> some Med- scars medic some scars <laughs> so basically here it, it's the book actually says all children should have it done because the first hair of the newborn are considered impure yeah, yeah. so i mean in 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 my family the, the first daughter also had you uh, yeah had the uh, hair, you know hair shaved so i had that still done but my oh, sister right. didn't either but uh, that explains this, a lot <laughs> this book says uh, <laughs> uh, it should be done to all the uh, all the newborn because the, the hair is considered impure um but um, yeah um it, and it's it said it should be done before the 6th month after the birth yeah uh, because the child's head is still quite fragile and you know just electric razor should be used um oh, okay yeah but and, for the and, boys the uh, boys they have another ceremony which, which is which is what most people do and that's between the ages of 1 and 3 uh okay. 
and where the boy is, you know, like a sikha is left, mm. like a little tuft at the back, uh, which, which is uh, the soft spot. Mm. So that is why actually most boys uh, 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 has are right, shaved, right, not right. girls, because we don't leave a little um, sikha for the girls. Yeah. So that, that, that was another question I had. Why do we have chokli? Mm. There's a um, top of the head, there's part of the head, a small portion of it is very, very soft. That is considered to be where, especially the yogis who can bring their life air up from the stomach to the heart, to the neck, through, they can bring it right up to the top of the head. And from there, they can actually release themselves if they have that power. So that's why it's a very soft part. And that soft part needs to be protected. And the idea is the hair uh, is around that soft part to protect okay. it. Good. Um, just the last one, um, Janoi. Mm. Um, I, in, in, in the communities that I've grown in, the noise are only done by Duhanas and Brahmins. Hmm. In, in Aymasoni, we don't have the noise in our... Uh, yeah, hmm. so, unless you want to become a priest. Well. Yeah, unless you want to become, become a, priest. a priest. Yeah, hmm. correct. Hmm. Yeah, we, we just had a Janoi ceremony in, the, in, the, in somebody's house here in Kobe. Because his, his, his ambition is to become a priest. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and just, uh, just to clarify, when, when uh, uh, the reason for not going to the temple is called Sutak, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, a, and a, a birth wise, it's called Pingru. Okay. Thank you for sharing all that. That mm -hmm. was very interesting. <laughs> I like the interaction. Very okay. good. And the last one on the wedding side, Fera, mm -hmm. going around the fire. We do it for four, four times. I yeah. know you yes. say how many. Not for me, it's a sub, sub, yeah. Yeah. Seven vows. Seven yeah. vows is different. Seven but steps. Fera, is a, a, Fera is, some say seven, no? Um, I think it's four. four. Uh, yeah, mo most, I think, in, in, I think in the north, they do seven. I don't know why, but yeah. yeah, we do four, and they do seven all in one go. Whereas we do it, mm. you know, one uh, one round, and then you do some more mantras, and then another round, mm. and like and that. Three are done with the man, in yes, the, in the lead, and then fourth one is with the lady in the lead. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. Yeah. That's the only time he's got to be in the lead. <laughs> After that, he's always behind. Yeah, I agree. After that. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Very good. Oh, yeah. Bakulabin, did you have a question? Uh, no, actually, I, the the um, Mr. Sony, he they really Ashwin Bai has really covered that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple of questions from Ishwari Kishan. We can never keep him down. No? Mm -hmm. Is the Thames a, a spiritual river? In one sense, everything is an extension of Ganga. Everything is an extension of Ganga, but it's quite a distant relative of Ganga. <laughs> so ideal scenario is um, to go to Bharat, to go to Haridwar or Gaya. That's the ideal scenario, if possible. And it can be done, it doesn't have to be done immediately, it can wait, and be done eventually in time. And the second question, you have described what man does throughout his life, what does the woman do? Similar things, um, similar things apply. The pre-birth, the, at the birth, same things, uh, upanaya, that is probably the men. Mm. Um, but the ladies, they don't need that purification because they're already um very soft-hearted and already got that spiritual tendency so the men need to do it because usually the men are a little bit crazy you know <laughs> unfortunately i have to say um but the ladies generally their natures are, are suitable for spiritual practice anyway and then the uh what was the next one 
marriage, that's fine. And uh, death is exactly the same. Uh, and then next, last one, Prabhu, you have described what, oh no, sorry, that is the one. Oh, you've asked it twice, okay. Prabhuji. No, hope, hope that answer. Yes, uh, Pari. I have, uh, I sort of took over Ishwari and Kishori today. I have three questions. <laughs> the most I've ever had. But um, my first one was, so when we were talking about like birth, uh, it said that par the parents' mindsets conceive mm -hmm. what they give birth to. So um, uh, no, no, no the, the, their mindset is important at the time of conception. Oh, okay. So if they like, if they're thinking like, if they think about the gender that they want, is that no. if that doesn't work? No. No. Okay. There's, there's a special ceremony as well for uh, genders as well in, in this uh, described in this book. You know, if you want a male child, uh, again, there's a special um, ceremony that you do. And you also conceive on a special day and things like that, if you want to be really precise, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that was my first question. My second question was, um, I think there was, the, uh, there was this one ceremony for boys. I think, it's, is it Janelle? Janoy. Janoy. Yeah. Yeah, the thread. So um, they do this a lot, a lot in the South, but they don't do it in the North. But they have ceremonies for when um, girls start their menstrual cycle. Oh, wow. is that okay. is that something that was uh, done before, like in the other yogas, or is it just? I have never heard of that one. Mm. That's the first time I'm hearing. Yeah, it's not in the book either. So, no. oh. so because Prabhuji, remember I told you I lived in um Hyderabad, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. A lot of my friends, when they you know they turned uh, like mm. 14, 15, they started mm. and they used to have like a really big ceremony. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, I, have, I have vaguely heard of uh, such a thing, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we hold at least three or four at our center from South Indian communities. Mm. And this is the ceremony uh, for puberty for uh, young girls. Mm. Mm. And it tends to be even bigger than weddings of some of them. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It's it's like she's entering womanhood. I think that's the significance. Mm. Yeah. I think it's also significant because obviously if you go through your menstrual cycle, your um you yeah. have the fertility for yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Interesting. Um, and then my last one was um so when when the with the funeral rites, um sometimes people like donate any uh, limbs they might have to like help other people mm -hmm. so are we allowed to do that before, donation yeah yeah are we allowed to do that before um go like being cremated yeah wow <laughs> there's a big debate on that yes yeah, so there's a lot to discuss there in essence there is a school of thought i don't actually subscribe to this school of thought anymore <laughs> but there is a school of thought saying that if if you donate your organs and if you are keeping somebody alive with those organs and that person commits a sinful act, you get the karma. I, I now do not agree that that is possible because the chain of action and reaction has, has, uh, has ceased. So if you give your organs... Um, it's not going to be a bad thing. It's, mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily recommended, but it's not mm -hmm. going to be a bad thing. Uh, okay. There was this, there's a lot of discussion about this, that, oh, yeah, you know, you, you oh, um, you, oh, don't know your heart and that person that stays alive and he kills somebody, you get the karma. I just think it's, I, I mean, this is... It's a, it's the, a material uh, machine, basically. Yeah, but it's just too far removed mm -hmm. uh, and... I can't see how you can ever envisage a reaction like that. So, but, but karma goes with the soul, not with the organs, no? Correct. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So once the body is cremated, that soul has left everything connected with that body. Exactly. So you should not uh, uh, encounter any karma. Would have thought so. Yeah. Would have thought so. But there is, as I said, there's a school of thought, and mm -hmm. that's a powerful school of thought mm -hmm. as well. 
which mm -hmm. argues, uh, and I used to believe in that, but I, I've now changed my uh, thinking on that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially after going through the Bhagavatam, uh, there's no reference to that in the Bhagavatam for a start. So I'd like to see, I'd like to see scriptural references to this, and I, there aren't any. So okay. any speculation. Yeah. <laughs> so then I would say, go ahead, because if you're helping somebody, um, you know, if, you, if that's your desire, it's not necessarily recommended in the scriptures, but you know what? There's no harm. Hmm. Also, Prabhuji, yesterday I was reading the, like, I was reading like a short PDF of the Garuda Purana. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, well, I had to do research on it for my, um, oh. my assignments. Okay. It, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't just I randomly picked it up. But um, when I looked at it, it was it was also talking about exactly like the birth rights and everything. So it was basically just revision for me when you started talking about. Yes. Uh, the, <laughs> and yeah, it yeah. mentioned some really cool stuff as well. And it also, again, like it just reiterates the point of Krishna being the Supreme Lord. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, put that book away. Yeah? <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'll put the code up now. Thank you so much. Yeah? So <laughs> let's go to the quiz. Um, and devotees can join if possible. Uh, I always forget the name, actually. Um, is it quiz? dot com <laughs> it's q i z i z z ah yeah so please join and uh, the code will be coming shortly and Pari, you're welcome to share your share your screen hey, Shori, Shori, i don't know if you were able to participate um last time you came first and second i think mm. <laughs> yes so the code for that website is 087854 In the meantime, if, if anybody's got any subjects that you'd like us to cover, we, we've got enough um, subjects to cover, but if anything I'm missing, we're missing, and you want us to cover it, uh, please do just drop us a line. Huh? Um, happy for, and if anybody wants to cover this aspect of death in a lot of detail, let me know. It is a bit gory. <laughs> so... Prabhuji, have you been having that problem in Croydon where there's like a shortage of oil? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you, you got that same issue. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I it's think it's the right. Russia, Russia, Ukraine thing. Yeah. Can someone please uh, put the link on chat so I can join? Oh, the link to the actual thing. Would you be able to do that, uh, Pali? Uh, yes. One second. Thank you. Thank you, Lena, and thank you for the version. Beautiful. Krishna's mercy, Prabhuji, as usual. Ishwari and Kishwari said, sadly, we can't, so we will answer the questions without a device. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the determination, guys. <laughs> Those two are absolutely amazing. <laughs> As you are, Perry, buddy. Thank you, Prabhuji. And thank you for uh, taking the time and uh, really uh, adds a lot of value to what we're doing, so. It's no problem. I think this is the longest quiz. This is like 20 questions. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to um, go and get something uh, for uh, one of our deities. Uh, so I'm going to leave a little early, but please carry on. Huh? <laughs> oh, next week. 
uh, we might be flying, but we can still hold it, but we might just be a little bit earlier. If we can start at quarter to one, um, so I'll, I'll, if we can start 15 minutes earlier, that'll help us uh, with our, our timings. So I'll put it on the chat anyway, on the uh, WhatsApp. And I'd like to thank everybody for participation, especially Ashun Bai. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant feedback. Love it. Um, if anyone isn't left, then should I stop, Prabhuji? Yeah, yeah, go yes, on. Yes. Okay. What does the word Varna mean? Society, soci social duties, social discrimination, or social divisions? Okay, so the correct answer was social, social divisions. What does the word ashram mean? A shelter, a labor house, a place of spiritual shelter, a small farm. So the correct answer was a place of spiritual shelter. What life is lived as a brahmachari? The student life, the household life, the retired life, or the renounced life? The student life was correct. What are three duties of a brahmachari? So please select three options. Um, to develop atrocious qualities, to hear, study, assimilate the Vedas, to be free from materialistic pleasure, to live a luxurious life, or to serve the Guru. Yeah, so the most selected were basically the correct ones. Um, what life is lived as a grihasta? Student life, household life, retired life, or renounced life? Household life is correct. What are three duties of a grihasta? To make money and enjoy pleasure, to live as a celebrate, to become a sannyasi, to, pre to perform sacrifice and ri religious rituals, or to give charity. Three um, correct ones for this one again. Ooh. So it was actually the first one and then the last two. What life is lived as a Varna Bhastha? The student life, household life, retired life, renounced life. So retired is the correct answer. Three duties of a Varna Bhastha to go on pilgrimage, to devote time to spiritual matters, to engage in austerity and penance, intensely focus on family responsibilities or to start off as a celebrate from birth. Yeah. First three, correct. Um, wow. 
what life is lived as a sannyasi <laughs> so the last one basically um student household retired or renounced there's only one correct answer so <laughs> renounced life is correct three duties of a sannyasi to be controlled by mind and senses to be fully dependent on god to be attached and fearful to make to fix the mind um, on the supreme or to teach the self importance to teach the importance of self realization so it was the second one and then the last two there are four varnas which varna are the priests and academics in shudra vaishya brahman kshatriya majority selected brahman which was correct brahmans um study and teach the vedas accept pay, paid employment there's two answers now uh, perform religious ceremonies or cannot offer guidance to kshatriya the majority answers that were selected were correct one who is a politician or a warrior comes under which varna shudra vaishya brahman or kshatriya one person left to answer oh almost um but yes it was kshatriya akshatriya must know all scriptures mainly arthashastra accept alms and charity protect all citizens from harm or be subtle and lenient towards criminals the first and third one are correct a businessman merchant or farmer would come under which one which varna um vaishya shudra kshatriya brahman yep Vaishya is correct. And so a Vaishya must protect animals and land, create wealth and prosperity, trade unfairly or exploit workers. I so it's it's um it's actually the first two they can't trade unfairly because it's unethical so that wouldn't be right in society that wouldn't you wouldn't do that in society um an artisan work or worker would come under which varna brahmin kshatriya vaishya shudra everyone got this right um shudra a shudra must 
live a celibate life, have no regard of moral principles, render service to others, or take pride in their work and be loyal. The last two are correct. Um, they are allowed to marry, so they don't have to be celibate. The Varnashram or caste system was created to guide the qualities of an individual to the life they live. Therefore, it is not determined by birth, true or false. True is correct. Your caste is not determined by birth. So, um, in the Kali Yuga, we are all regarded as a, and then please place the Varnashram system, which caste we are all considered as. Mataji, I mistakenly inputted the wrong um, answer. That's um, fine. Okay. No problem. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. As long as you know, we're all considered Shudra. <laughs> That's the, the correct answer. Okay. So, in... The days we have Smita Mataji, then Varsha Mataji, and then Nikhilesh Prabhuji. Brilliant. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Well done, uh, Pari and everybody else as well. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody next week. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Rosha, Smita.